Okay, let's try one that might have a little bit of a, a catch to it. Let's see. How about 16 over um, 28? All right, so let's say you look at this. And you could pause it now again if you want and try it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what might happen if, if you um, choose a number that's not necessarily the biggest number that goes into 16 and 28. If you can find the largest factor, the largest number that goes into both 16 and 28, you're going to get done faster. But if you don't find that largest number, you can still get the problem right. So I'm looking at this, and let's say I just go, well, this is even, 16 is even, 28 is even, so 2 goes into it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and divide by 2. Okay, divide by 2, divide by 2, and I come up with 8 over 14. Now maybe I circle my answer, and I'm done. Well, here's the problem. We're not done because there is another number that goes into both 8 and 14. 2 will go in there again, so we're not done. That's how we know we're done, is when there's no other number that will go into both the numerator and the denominator. There's no other common factors. That's what they're called. So since 2 will go into both of these numbers, i got to keep going. Now, it's not always going to be the same number. This was 2 and 2. I mean, it might be 2 and 3 or whatever. It's just if you can divide something else by both those numbers, you got to do it. So now i got 4 sevenths. Is there anything that goes into both 4 and 7? 4 is 2 times 2. 2 doesn't go into 7. It's also 4 times 1, but 4 doesn't go into 7, so then we know we're done. All right, let's look at another example, a little different example here. What if we had, let's say we had, um, oh wait, before I do that, I want to show you something. If, let's take this 1628s again, and let's say we would have seen right off the bat that we could divide by 4. So what if we divided by 4 right from the very start? Maybe the guy next to you is dividing by 4, and you're like, what? I'm dividing by 2. How come you're dividing by 4? Well, both of you guys can get the same, same answer, the right answer. So if I divide by 4, 16 divided by 4 is 4. 28 divided by 4 is 7. See, I got the right answer. I still got the same answer as my neighbor who is dividing by 2 and dividing by 2. I just got there faster because I picked the biggest number that went into 16 and 28. And if you notice, 2 times 2 is 4. So that's if you divide by 2 and 2, that means 4 is going to go into the number. So that's good to know because if you're working with somebody and they want to divide by 2 and you want to divide by 4, it doesn't mean that one of you is wrong. Both of you can still get the right answer. There's usually more than one way to do a math problem. All right, let's look at one more example that's got a little bit of a different thing that happens here. So let's say I've got, um, let's go with uh, 11 over 55. Some different numbers there. Well, 11 is what we call a prime number. There's no, there's nothing that goes into 11, no factors of 11 except for one in itself. 55 is also 5 times 11 and 1 times 55, so 11 goes into both these numbers. 11 will always go into a number where the digits repeat like this, 55. 11 goes into that 5 times. 66, 11 will go into that. 77, 88, 99, 11 will go into all those two-digit numbers that repeat the same digit. Okay, so if we divide by 11, 11 divided by 11, how many times does 11 go into 11? Well, we go in once. So we do end up with a 1 in the numerator and a 5 in the denominator. Now you have to have that 1 up there. You can't just leave it blank and just write 5. It is 1 fifth. 11 out of 55 pieces would be the same as 1 piece out of 5. It's not just 5. It's 1 over 5. Now if I flip this over, we haven't done an improper fraction, but we might as well look at one see the difference. If I flipped over 11 55ths and changed it to 55 over 11, now there's a couple different ways to look at this. We could do it the same way we did it uh, the other way when it was 11 over 55, divide the top and bottom by 11. Now we get 5 over 1, 
5 over 1, 5 divided by 1 is 5. So that reduces down to just plain old 5, a whole number. Remember, your fraction bar can also be thought of as a divide. So I could look at this problem and I could 55 over 11, 55 elevenths, and I could actually think of it like this, 55 divided by 11. And 55 divided by 11 is 5. Now all these other examples, they were proper fractions where the top number was smaller than the bottom number. So I can't, you know, if I do 11 divided by 55, 55 doesn't go into 11 even one time. That's how we end up with a fraction or a number less than 1. So hopefully you find that helpful and um, you can go and work on a worksheet and get some extra practice on this. Mm -hmm.